Perfect. Good. So uh, here is a, a very basic overview of an advancement that has been uh, made today. Uh, we have uh, in parallel a few um, experiments. One experiment is where the most of the people from our group engaged, and it's um, an attempt to find a winning combination of keywords. Uh, with the help of yes, Jason, <laughs> Yasan, Jason, uh, today we've uh, found the combination that cuts the, uh, the search uh, to a very specific uh, disease. And this is indeed a risk factor. And this combination is all kind of words that are related to disease. For example, uh, heart failure, eh, myocardial, uh, cardiac, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, ischemic, everything that is related uh, to heart. Uh, and uh, words that uh, define some kind of pre-existing uh, health, uh, underlying health condition. These words like pre-existing pre, pre, pre health, underlying health, health conditions, etc., etc., etc. So together, it helps to find exactly what we need. Now, what happens in parallel? In parallel, uh, we have uh, one member who is uh, running kind of purely experimental thing. And basically, uh, first of all, he did crazy thing. He, he pickled the whole data set himself because for some reason he couldn't work with a, uh, uh, with a data set prepared uh, by Brandon. I don't know what really what was the kind of reason for that. But <clears throat> he uh, filtered, uh, he, he selected kind of uh, COVID articles uh, filtered it by uh, admission and started to search word, word patient and patient characteristics. And he has some interesting findings and now he's moving with that. And that is a, a task that will help us to get all common comorbidities. So we will be able to present here is a risk fact factors. Among risk factors, we have comorbidities. Here are some most common comorbidities and probably their effect. Another more great granular uh, risk tasks uh, we will do in a form that I've described previously. And beside that, Lucas and Brandon, they work on a real uh, search system that is kind of Google style system where you just put the words you refer to and you're really getting relevant results. One of three should work at least at this uh, stage. I feel that we will have the submission and we will have it timely. One of the methods should work, but uh, probably the main effort at the moment should be combined on two exact tasks. One is, uh, finding full list that is a synonym to pre-existing or underlying health conditions. And then uh, with this list, finding most common uh, words or uh, words that are in articles that refer to the same concept. Right? So, uh, if you have any questions or any ideas at this stage, that's uh, uh, greatly appreciated. Mm -hmm. Hello, Victor Mirel is here. Um, I'm, Hi, Victor. I'm, I'm new here. We've exchanged only some emails, um, some Slack messages. So I would just, I just wanted to ask a quick question. There is among the data sets that have been uploaded to Kaggle something uh, by SciBite Labs. Um, have, is anyone using this data set? It might help a lot in what you just described. Oh, can you please uh, send me a link to this data set so that I can share it with everybody afterwards? 
Sure, I will. Or you can just post it in risk task. That would be lovely. Let's we'll take a look. Yes. Oh, that's amazing. Any other questions, suggestions, discussions? Uh, Beside that, um, uh, Mandle Kosi, one of the members, he kind of did process uh, and pickled the whole data set himself. If everybody find this uh, relevant, this is also shared in the risk task uh, main channel. Uh, so uh, if there are no questions, then I have a questions. Uh, how do you think, like how fast can we really create this list combine with hard engrams and get first extractions. How do you think, how fast can we do that? How long will it take? Extractions for what, I'm sorry? Um, from papers, method sector and research, uh, res research method, result, all this. First of all, we need that to be done and labeled. And uh, if we like take the exact terms, it kind of exactly define exactly what we need. Like we need, first of all, to build a terms that are uh, related to pre-existing conditions, underlying health conditions. As soon as we have that, for example, heart disease, we partially have, we can combine them with end operator somewhere in text, this and this, with a high density of heart related uh, terms, and that will limit us with exactly hard risk papers. Uh, as far as the methods and results sections go, um, I can train a classifier based on the vectors and that shouldn't take too long. The, the problem with the original data is that it's just like so messy. They, they have a, a, like more than 250,000 unique section labels in the data. Um, and it's more a matter of just like cleaning up the noise uh, because some of them do relate to methods or results, but it's but they're labeled as like the first sentence in the paragraph or they're labeled with like weird symbols or something. Um, so I, I can use existing data to build a classifier. I will get back to you on that maybe in a few hours. Um, and the second thing uh, about keyword search for extracting specific um, uh, things that relate to like myocardial infarction or heart attacks or uh, comorbidities with related with relation to COVID-19. Um, that should be handled when uh, Lukash and I and a couple of other people get this uh, search, search index built, um, but that might be a, a matter of a couple of days. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, but I can tell you my concern, okay, I've expressed it to Lucas and now I will express it to you. Uh, normally like you're basically creating a search engine okay normally when search engine is trained okay normally by big companies there is a human input there is a ranking procedure real human significant input and ranking procedure might take quite a good amount of time so if we are like optimistic your indeed your solution is super optimal and indeed, it's stupid to use anything else but your solution. But if the solution will take too much of time tuning, then let's stick with my stupid solution because it's simple, fast, and stupid. Like, <laughs> kind of. <laughs> uh, I, I, don't think, uh, I don't think your solution is stupid at all. Actually, uh, most of uh, what we are able to do on the search engine is based on your work. So you made this enormous and really nice uh, list of keywords for different topics and stuff. So 
um, that really is the bulk of the work, uh, at least uh, from my perspective. So it, it's super, super useful. Um, if uh, for something you know less complicated and in the short term, um, if you f feed me just like a few keywords of like, if this is exactly what I want, then I, I should be able to just get you the lines within like a few minutes or something, so. Yes, but exact match is not good enough. It should be wide. Uh, it's, it's just not good enough. Why? Because it will suddenly drop out the papers that probably have critical importance. And I, right. want, want, to, and I want to avoid the situation. So how do I want to uh, avoid the situation? I want kind of, you know, speaking logically, combine or uh, and operators within uh, the uh, pretty wide uh, data set of uh, words. Okay. This will kind of give slightly more precise results than just the exact matching. Okay, does right. it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so, so yeah. uh, at least uh, one of the issues that everyone else has is that they run out of memory or something, but I have the, this giant machine that I, I should be able to do search without a need for keywords, just based on vector search similarities. Um, and I, I have to apologize here for like the size of the data set and the size of the, the vector files and stuff. And it, it's not easy to work with them in Kaggle. Uh, there's been tons of problems there. So that's entirely my fault. Um, and I apologize. Uh, but at least the, the data I have exists. Uh, just let me know what you want to find and I will do a, a simple vector search. No, man, it's okay. The pickle files were very useful. We can just iterate through the pickle files and get all the data we want. Uh, sorry? Can you please say that again? From Charlie? Well, we just think that uh, vectors were useful, very helpful for the works. Uh, the pickle files were there, we can just iterate through them instead of loading them all at once. So the memory problem was resolved in that section. Uh, Okay, but I, I think it's also kind of a matter of um, um, time and uh, computational power, is it? If I got it correctly? Yeah, from my point of view, that's, that's probably what the issue is. Mm -hmm. Kaggle just doesn't have enough, mm, uh, Kaggle instances don't really have enough computational power, they don't have enough RAM for people to load in all of the data, at least in the way that I'm formatting it. So something that I could do is just section level instead of sentence level information or only document level information would be significantly smaller and easier to work with. Um, uh, for the high quality results that you want, just uh, send me uh, you know exactly what you want and I'll be able to find it. The, the problem uh, for the past few days has been that I, I was more focused on my other job. <laughs> I've been a little bit behind on it because of COVID stuff, so I needed to switch gears a little bit, but I, I should have some time tonight. Uh, I'm sorry about that. Oh, I, that sounds amazing and you shouldn't be sorry. It's like everything you do is, is probably the most solid base for everything we can do so far. And still, I'm surprised to see users doing their own data sets. And like, if you want like pickle data set, if, if you like really for some reason struggle with the best data set we have so far, <laughs> and you want guys pickled uh, data set done by uh, other users, just ping me and I'll, I'll share it with you. But I don't think it's a good idea because it's been so, not just so much work done. This, this job is amazing by itself. There should be a way uh, to use it maybe on your own computer. Yeah, there, there's a version mismatch between pandas on Kaggle and pandas that everyone else is using. Uh, so Kaggle only it's allows not, to use pandas. It's not the only. It's not the only. Uh, it's not the only problem. There is this type mismatch that results in an uh, enormous uh, number of problems, etc. Like everything that, m many things that work perfectly on Anaconda, on my own computer, for example, when I run the same code in Kaggle with internet or, on, or whatever, it just, it just doesn't work the same, the same way. Kaggle is a problematic notebook by itself. So, Sir. okay. Yeah. At least, like, this, this is the one thing I ran into with a friend was that Kaggle has preloaded uh, package modules versions, 
and even if you try to update particular ones, uh, you just can't. It, it won't allow that. Um, and so pandas, I think, is stuck at like 0 0.23, which is pretty old. Um, yeah. But there's nothing <laughs> you can do about it. Guys, can I just um, can I just ask a, a, a technical question? Can you hear me, by the way? Yeah. yeah. Yep. Um, it, it's it's a very simple. I'm not I'm not the most technical, but perhaps you can explain. So, where a traditional search engine, or what I'm calling a traditional search engine, you input a keyword, and the output is the occurrences within whatever it is you're searching. Uh, the location of those those instances, right? That's very basic. Um, that, that would, uh, sure, that, that's what we would call like a full text search, um, which is right. a little bit different from a search engine, but I'm happy okay. yeah, to continue. Fine, so a full text search. So can you just explain to me in really as simple as we can, what, what it is that we're doing that's different from that? And, and it, you know, how that's being implemented? Is this so, is this part of, um, so yeah, we can use engrams, um, um, which oh, you could use engrams with a full text search. So what is the differentiator between engrams and a full text search and engrams and what we're trying to do? Is it the vectors? So engrams is a little bit different. It, it takes into account okay. the distance between two uh, words. Uh, uh, did, you, did you want me to explain sort of what we're doing with this, the search engine that we're creating? If you wouldn't mind, yeah, just, yeah, please. Okay, I'll, I'll try to put it in simple terms. Um, so the way that mm, you build a search engine that's robust is that you uh, take Elasticsearch, for example. Have you, have you worked with Elasticsearch at all? Uh, okay, no. so in a search engine, you, you want things to, uh, you want the engine to understand what you want out of the context and um, words, what words co-occur with uh, in, within their context. So uh, the way that our search engine works is that it builds an index uh, based on the words that occur in each document. So it's basically term frequency, inverse document frequency, TFIDF, um, so that each word is given an importance and score per document. So it might be more uh, important to have this word in this document because it's more representative of its topic than it is in some other thing. Secondly, there's a variable that accounts for um, how often that term occurs, that's term frequency. Um, and that is controlled for by, by a variable. Um, and, in, and a second variable is the uh, length of the document. So that if you have a small document with a small number of words in it, uh, it is measured against the term frequency, inverse document frequency score of that term and all of the co-occurring terms in all of the documents. So, uh, and then it's controlled okay. for by the length of the text. So that's, this, that's the simple keyword that, that's a simple yeah. keyword version. And then you have a second module that's separate, which is the vectorized representation. So the short, Jesus, the shortcoming of uh, keyword <laughs> search. <laughs> Sorry, Sorry. My, my brother's here. Sorry. <laughs> 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 so, <laughs> uh, so the, uh, the shortcoming of keyword search is that, um, for instance, you, the word myocardial has to deal with the heart, right? But if you search for myocardial, you're not going to get the same documents that mention heart if they don't also mention myocardial, even though you would, you would uh, think of that as a relevant thing. So the vectorized representation of text is more robust in that it doesn't rely on words at all. It only relies on the probabilistic distribution of words in their contexts. And right. it learns how to represent the semantic content of a word or a sentence given a lar into a large uh, n-dimensional vector. So uh, the, the representation for king minus the representation for male plus female equals roughly the representation sure. numerically for queen. That's the idea. So then you have this really nice um, TF-IDF score with, that controls for length and it controls for term frequency saturation. And then you have a second module that accounts not for the words, but actually for the semantic content. And you put those together into a uh, more robust, it's, it's kind of like a recommendation system. It says, mm -hmm. actually, I think you're looking for this, even though you didn't use the right words. Mm -hmm. Okay, really well explained. So we've got, a list of, we've got a list of words and risk factors now that we want to search for. Can you use all of those metrics and, and, and methods that you've just described? Can we use them right now? 
At the moment, uh, yes, but I would have to do them separately. So I, I haven't put yeah, them yeah, together yeah. yet, but if you wanted to say, I, I need to know everything about uh, sentences mentioning the age of women in studies, and then I could do a, sure. a simple vector search and anything that mentions something semantically okay. similar, I could bring up in a, in a few seconds okay. and then send that to you. Okay, yeah. okay. amazing. So what I, what I think we should do, again, I'll be, um, I think we'll, we'll probably, uh, I'll leave it there for me, but, um, I think, yeah, we should just prove the concept using the words like Myers uh, worked so hard and everybody else has worked so hard to get. Prove it on a, prove a concept on a, on a small batch and then, um, yeah, okay, cool. That's really well explained. Thanks. Yeah, that is what we basically will do pretty soon. Now we have a call with Artur and I think we all have to jump there. So thank you so much for your time. If you have any additional questions, please feel free to ping me and thank you all for an amazing job and advancements that we do lately. Awesome. Thanks, Maya. You're awesome. Thanks for all your work. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thank you. Bye.